and welcome to Musto Morning from the Land Rover Burley Horse Trials. Coming up on the show, we've got six times Burley winner William Fox Pitt, Musto ambassador now for over 15 years, here talking about his experiences of Burley and how it comes to win this great event. Well, many of you will know about our Musto mayor who travels the length and breadth of the country. And there have been queues since 8 a.m. yesterday to get a chance on the Musto stand to have a sit on her. It was a competition that was running all day, and I'm happy to say that I have our winner with us. Emily, congratulations. Thank you very much. How long did you queue for? I was lucky I was first on, so I didn't have to queue. First mm. on. Now, just tell us a little bit about the Musto Mare experience. Uh, it's incredible. It's really realistic. Um, but they don't go sideways, though, so that's quite a nice change. And, that's not, and they don't buckle rear? They don't buckle rear or refuse, so it's nice, yeah. <laughs> and are you getting a sort of simulation of riding around the actual Land Rover Burley track? Yeah, it's the actual Burley jumps. It's, I think it's a bit easier after looking around the course than the actual course is, but yes. And what sort of impression did you get? Uh, good luck to the riders. <laughs> <laughs> you were glad you were yeah. on a simulator. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Oh, well, look, well done. Congratulations first Thank on you. and our first winner. What would be your top tip for people today who want to have a go on the Musto Mare? Um, go for it. Enjoy it. Like you did. Like I did. And yeah. congratulations, £150 prize. Thank well you done, you. Thank you. <laughs>the reason why we know and love Musto is because it's the right clothing for the right conditions and so I'm going to give you my pick for the weekend of what I think you should be picking from your Musto range to wear and it is unseasonably cold here today it's the first time I've walked out onto the showground and thought ooh, autumn is actually here but the great thing about Musto is you've got that whole layering range so I've picked out this lovely fleecy gilet which gives me that core cool warmth I've gone for a little bit of style with the printed shirt and the extra product that I picked out is a new one in the range, which is the Event Raincoat. And this will give you every type. It's going to rain. I don't think it's going to rain all day, but you should have this in your armoury. It's new this year, and it's got the extra down feature in the middle. So if you want to drop the gilet, just go for the Event Coat. It's got the down feature in the middle, so it'll keep you warm, but it's 100% waterproof. And us riders, we love that full-length look, don't we? This autumn 2019, Musto are focusing on their incredible group of brand ambassadors, masters of their field. And today we're going to talk to none other than William Fox Pitt. And if you want a master of Burley, then there are none bigger than this guy. Six times winner, the winning most jockey here at the Burley Horse Trust. What is it, William, that makes you so good here? <laughs> That's quite a question, first one. Um, I think I've been very lucky to have been coming here a long time. Um, I first won it when I was 26, so I probably didn't know any different. And the terrain at Burley is unique, and you've really got to work um, around that and not be pushing your horse at the wrong time. And I think I've had an understanding for the real physical demands of Burley, and I've been very lucky to have ridden some jolly good horses. Where in your background of training do you think those skills came from? Because this isn't something that just happened when you were 26. This, is, this has come about over many, many years. Well, I think yeah, Burley is really all about cross-country, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's one of the, well, if not the biggest course in the world. And really, all, all I learned about cross-country was in the hunting field. And from a young age, just jumping jumps and at speed um, for a long time, sometimes on tired horses, but managing managing horses through a day's hunting was a, was a great education, great training for actually riding horses um, four miles around Burley. And if you went to see younger riders today who are out there, and we've got quite a few first timers here, because there's no Samart Todd, no you, no Andrew Nicholson, and between you, you've won 16 Burley titles since 1987. So the dominance of you three has been extraordinary. What advice would you give to those guys? Well, I'd, I'd say, Obviously, I'm hoping their horses will be fit, but I would say very much feel your horse all the way around Burley and ask him questions and crack on when the going's good, when the terrain is favourable, and when it's demanding, when it's testing and twisting and turning. Take a bit of time just to let him catch his breath and push him on later on. And very often around Burley, once you've gone up Win Winners Avenue, that's the last big pull, I think, on, on the course this year. You can then nurse the horse home. So you don't want to, and actually then you can make up some time. So you could be quite far down on your clock, um, at say halfway, 
and quite often riders would panic then and they want to be up on their clock um, but then they haven't got the energy to get home whereas if you're a little bit down on your clock at halfway perhaps don't worry and then use up the end of the course down the hills to cut the corners and, and, and to make it up and I would say very very much um, it's important at Burley to, to really feel your horse all the way and not just go to your watch bit like Musto, Burley has kept to those core traditions. If you look at the Grand National, you've got Beaches Brook. If you look at Burley, they've really held on to those key fences like the Leaf Pit, the Trout Hatchery, those markers that when you get here, you know you're at Burley. When you put on a Musto coat, you know you've got a Musto coat. And when you get to Burley, you know you're at Burley because of those key fences. Which ones of those really instill the kind of fear or kick the adrenaline in? <laughs> Well, I think, um, you know, historically, as you say, Burley is known for certain fences and obviously the trout hatchery, and now it's trout hatcheries. Um, in the old days, we used to go through it once, and now I think you've got four water jumps. or um, You know, they are always going to be influential. Um, I think historically, you've always got the leaf pit. Um, in the old days, it used to be number three. Can you, can you explain? I mean, I can't imagine that hurling yourself off something like that on a horse yes. where you're basically out of control going down to it I mean how on earth do you do that um I, I, you've got no choice I guess there's no point thinking about it it's got to be done um I think there is an option around the back over the two hedges um and then on a more gradual slope down to the to the bottom brush this year but um no it's um it comes on it's quite early in the course this year after the main arena um but before the main bulk of the course but in the old days we used to start up at the back of the stables one two was two normal jumps and number three was off the leaf bit and that was often the end of the day for some people because they just weren't even going and the stables were behind and um no one would want to go particularly not the horses You've won Burley not just six times but on six different horses and you said you were just 26 years old when you first won it what memories do you have of of that extraordinary and historic win on Charco? Oh uh, well um it was a total surprise. <laughs> like, what? I'm in the lead. What's going on? What's going on? And going into the ring, um, I think I could afford one jump down, which I used up. And um, I just didn't really complicate things then. It was like, oh, well, you know, it's, it's happening early. And if it's happening now, maybe it can happen again another day. So get in there and do my best. And no one expected me to win anyway. So it was a bit of a complete outside chance on a very good horse. He was a lovely horse. He'd been around Burley before with Judy Herbert, um, Judy Hancock that now is, and she produced him beautifully. So he did know his job. Um, and I'm not sure I totally did, but he just took me on round, and um, all he had to do was kick him. He was a bit of a lazy, lazy chap, um, and I was good at kicking because I'd learnt to ride on a very lazy, um, good old horse called Steadfast who had to kick on. So I was good at kicking, and that was about it. And, um, yeah, it was just shock and you just thought oh maybe I I should retire now it might never get better <laughs> <laughs> and as you developed that masterful skill it did get better how much how long did it take you to then win your next Burley it took a long time About and I think I think it took a while to get other horses of that level um, obviously when Charka was here um, I only had him um, so it took a while to establish a team and to get into the to sport um, with good strength of depth. Um, and I think, was it Highland Lad next, maybe? Um, and that was another total outsider. Um, he came here as a young horse, completely doing his first burley, and um, he nailed it. So um, that wasn't expected either. And then after that, you know, I came here with the greats of Balancula and Tamarillo and... Um, they were probably a bit more expected to do well so I'm glad they pulled it off um, but yes it was just it just took a while to get that sort of team and also you know Burley requires a very special sort of horse in the sport a real um, you know galloper stamina horse who's who's tough and um, loves going I mean other you know badminton's much flatter um, a much easier course to get a different sort of horse round whereas Burley you want very much in the sport you say oh, I've got a Burley horse um, and there aren't many of those if you look back through those six horses we talked about the great Charka and what he did for you in and your career out of the other ones we've got the Highland lads Parkmore Eds Balincoola Tamarillo they're now all great names of the past great names on that role of honor and when you come down Winners Avenue 
they just keep coming, the William Fox pits, the William Fox pit, the William Fox pit. What is your, what's your outstanding memory of, of those? <laughs> I think it's got to be my first one because it was like, wow, it's, um, it is possible. Um, I've, won, I've won a four star. It's all, it's all okay. I think that was, I think that would have, I was younger and probably um, took it like it was a normal. But I think when I look back, I think the shock of that was the big one. And then, of course, the others all had their own little um, real excitement about that personal journey, that personal, that victory in the end. How did that come about? Um, well, I would say I think it was very exciting to win on Tamarillo. He'd won badminton, so it was quite a big... Um, you, weren't you first and second that year, which is even more extraordinary, with Tamarillo and Balancula? Yes, yeah, I think Max was second to, to, to Tam. Um, and you know he was an amazing horse because he did loads of burlies <clears throat> and I'm so glad that he won one of them because he really deserved to um, but he's been first here second here I think he was third here um, so you know he was a real burly horse and um, so lucky to have had a horse that could come to burley so many times because lots of horses you know their careers don't last that long um, but I think yeah Tamarillo's win here was like oh you know he really deserved you know he's as good a horse as he was, it would have been a real shame for him not to have done the double. Um, he missed out on Olympics, he missed out, he came second at the Europeans, um, lots of things went a bit, he came second twice at badminton as well as winning, so he's had lots of seconds, so it was really good to not be second here. <laughs> <laughs> and win it. And we've talked about the highs, you've been here so many times over so many years, Can you? is there a standout memory where you had to really pull into the reserves because because it wasn't it what you come here as the Burley champion but uh, there's got to be some bad moments here at Burley too. Oh God, there's plenty of times when it when it goes when it goes wrong. Um, plenty of times when you come here with with high hopes and it just doesn't um, it just doesn't come off. And that I think that's the sport. And I I probably I would say um, not, I've been relaxed about it, but I've been quite kind of quite okay with it going wrong I think because I've had the good days I very much it makes it easier to take those days do you when feel, it doesn't go right as a master and I'm sure master would say in terms of developing their range you sort of learn from your mistakes to become the master you've got to learn from the things that go wrong and the things that aren't quite right oh absolutely I mean you really do and um, you know I've been coming here for, for many years and you, you've got a, a stash of information which you hope you can draw on at the right time and invariably you don't, invariably you forget. Um, but I think it is, it is those highs that make it easier to, um, to move on from the lows. Otherwise, you know, the lows in eventing can be quite, um, quite depressing, quite damaging. And um, you've really got to be able to put them behind you. And, you know, I've been coming to, um, to Burley for a quite a long time. My, my, my first one, I think it was in 1990. Um, and I can remember riding a lovely horse around called Fairy Sovereign and I can remember coming on the way here and I was, I think I was 20. And my mother saying, no, you don't have to do this. You don't have to go. You know, it's okay if you, you can withdraw. And I just thought, why? I'm, you know, I'm entered, I'm qualified, I'm going to go. She said, well, your, your horse has, you know, got very little experience and you're only 20 and, you know, you must think you can pull up at any stage. <laughs> Um, I don't know if she meant any of that, but I was kind of, um, didn't cross my mind not to go, but um, I can remember it. Um, I decided that the, the trout hatchery was not for us at that year, so I was going to go the long way. And I think it took, he was such a strong puller. It took me about a minute to get through the trout hatchery by going the long way. Um, but he did, he got, he jumped all the jumps, he's clear around and he finished, I think he finished 20th. So it was a, and amazing. And those sort of run. experiences are then what you pull on when you actually go one, there with a chance and and you've got to get that experience haven't you exactly i mean i was so lucky to be here and be learning when i was learning when i was young and um absorbing everything so the fact that i then next time i came i won it at burley i wasn't a burley virgin i was you know it was like oh, i've done burley so now i can do it better um i didn't know that it would be charka but it was um a definite advantage to have been here um in those inexperienced days, kind of cutting my teeth. 
And we'll be talking to um, Zara Tyndall later on in the week about her Burley experiences and her first time here. She finished second and thought, well, I don't know what all the fuss is about. And then is now back here again with a horse that she really likes. But it's, it's, it's fascinating to hear if... This does feel like there's a change in the sport. There does feel like there's a change in in Absolutely. you three big old timers. Do you think there's an opportunity for a young 26 year old like you were all those years ago to come out this year and beat the Oliver Town ends and the um, Tim Price is the world number ones back here again this year? It's a good, I that's a good question. I would say absolutely nothing in that sense has changed. You've still got um, the good experienced riders and, and, the, and the, the weaker riders and kind of the greener riders um, in my old days. So it was no different. Um, I still had to beat the likes of Karen Dixon and um, Ian Stark and um, it, you, had, you had them all, all to beat. But I think the sport is so competitive. You know, it's very tough. Those, those good ones now are so, so good. Um, so professional at dressage and the cross country is a bit different without the steeplechase you know the steeplechase and the Rosen tracks at Burley were infamous you know they were demanding you out there for nearly an hour before you even did the cross country so the horses had to be um, I'm not saying fitter but prepared in a very much a tougher um, harder stamina way and therefore um, you probably lots of the horses now that can be flashy and lovely in the dressage and jumping in the old days they wouldn't have been here do you think they can be here it's still an 11 minute 15 cross country that is a tough endurance test isn't it yeah i think i think certain ones can i think it's still yes it's tough but i think um that you ought to look 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 down look at the breathing of all the horses it's certainly be very interesting if we looked at it now and looked at it 10 years ago there has definitely been a change in um less of the thoroughbred but more of the um, the flashy, um, amazing horses that are that can be winners. Um, but I think if it if it rains, you know, it's it's very tough. But let's hope for no rain today. <coughs> Overnight leader Eliza Stoddart. Um, really exciting performance by her after the first day of dressage. Not to say she's going to be in that position going into cross country, but certainly shocked a few people and certainly her first time in a press conference and uh, sitting next to world number one Tim Price. Yeah, that was amazing, wasn't it? I mean, that's just um, just a sport. It's so exciting that can still happen, that she can be ahead of world number one after dressage on day one. And goodness, you know, we're hoping that she, she hangs in there today because there's some good ones to come today. But um, it's not done in any way. The, the draw apparently is done fairly, so they shouldn't be lows better today than they were yesterday. So um, seriously exciting for her. And if anyone can handle the pressure, I'm sure she will. You know, she's, she's been around, she's done juniors and young riders, um, you know, she's a, she's a tough cookie. Well, William, it's great to have you here. Brilliant to have you as part of the Musto brand. And uh, I know I'm sure you're quite relaxed, actually, now not riding. It must be quite nice to be here just yeah, advising and helping people out. It's, it's quite different, isn't it? But it's, um, it's very enjoyable. And I'm looking forward to um, walking the course again this afternoon and um, doing various bits and bobs for, for, for my sponsors and um rather woke up you know it'd be quite nice to wake up tomorrow morning and go ah oh, <laughs> <won't it? laughs> well very good to see you thanks very much